All four parties are in the room with Rudolph. The Red Nose Reindeer. What? And uh, yeah. Bixen. But you have permission. It's your winter wonderland. Are you fucking going down the chimney tonight? <laughs> Is it going to be a white Christmas or it's not? It's going to be a white Christmas. Hell yeah! 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 Let's start the pod. And 13th and I was back with the holiday episode 2022. Wrapping it up. Heading into the new year. Welcome, Elmers. This year we are sitting around the Yule Log and watching... Black Christmas, Bob Clark's 1974 classic Black Christmas. Uh, we're going to have a lot to say yeah. about this. Uh, let's get into it. Rob, Bill, say hi. Hey What's up, guys? Um, did you guys have a good holiday? Yeah, it was pretty good. It, yeah, the travel to and from was frustrating, but everything mm. else was pretty good, all in all. Well, we're all here, we're together, we're in one piece, and we're doing the holiday episode. It's, uh, you know, a little past Christmas for most everybody. Actually, everybody. <laughs> Same calendar for all of us. Well, no, actually, Mostly some everybody. of us are Russian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox, and so Christmas has not happened yet. Well, whatever. It's good. good. All I'm saying to all our Orthodox brothers and sisters out there... I wish you a Merry Christmas come <laughs> January 7th, as per your calendar. Yes, and to all of you, indeed, uh, uh, happy Ukrainian Shalom. Ukrainian brothers, yes. Well, Hanukkah happened a while ago, but yeah, also... Whatever, I'm talking about the Orthodox... Um, <laughs> um, all right, so this movie is 1974. It's directed by... Bob Clark, you guys Bobby. might know the name because he's had a storied and checkered and wild, a checkered, I don't think that's accurate, but a wild film career in Hollywood. He has done this film. Another classic Christmas film he's done was A Christmas Story, Ralphie. Christmas story, yeah. Um, he's done Porky's, Oof. classic comedy in the 70s. Yep. Um, he also did Baby Geniuses, which we'll be watching later tonight. Stick around for that, Bill. And... Um, <laughs> He's he's yeah. kind of done a little bit of everything, but if you ask me, it's really easy to tell you what his best film is, and it's this, this one, one by a mile for me. It's so crazy. I know some people like some. Uh, I like Porky's, and some people like Christmas Story. But I was he, gonna say, sorry, it's but it's like so insane that he's made like two of the most popular Christmas movies, and they're so different. Yeah, he's like a classical bard. Kind know? of right. Yeah. Yeah, like he's just a good storyteller, and he has so he is macabre. He has family. He has comedy, like, like kind of crude comedy, sexy, bald, baldry, I guess tales. Yeah, uh, he's like a skald, uh, you know, in like a Norwegian sense or whatever of uh, the sagas. Uh, respect. Yeah, this uh, film is actually pretty widely funny. Um, well, is, yeah, it's it's pretty well written. It's funny. It's well acted. Um, but it's pretty widely regarded as one of the better horror movies um, from like that classic genre or classic era of the '70s. Like we've talked about, some great great horror movies came out in that time. Um, whether you put Jaws in that category or right. you know like uh, Alien, you know some of these ones that are just outside or suspense, but everything in between, you know from the Omen, Exorcist, Black Christmas, Halloween, it's right up there with the best of the best. Um, and it came out a few years before Halloween. It's clearly got some inspiration from the Giallo. Um, oh yeah, that point of view, the hands, um, the red herring. Yeah, the red herring, um, the beautiful women. It's a little bit different, though, and this movie actually is quite a bit different than some of the slashers that would follow it, I think. Maybe Halloween, um, at least the first one, escapes 
kind of some of the tropes, but definitely by the time we get to 1980 and Friday the or um, Friday the 13th comes in, it's a lot of sexualization and a lot of punishing the young and stupid uh, ch- like victims in the slasher movies. It's kind of like a new way for them to die. You don't cheer for them. You cheer for the killers. This watch is a lot more like a suspense, like the giallo mystery type of thing. But also you care about the characters. And it doesn't fall victim to all the like, oh, the women are alone and they get naked and they like have sex. So they have to die because they're not representing like moral purity I, I don't know. It seems to be a step beyond their aggression that would come in the years shortly after when the slashers kind of boomed up. Yeah, I mean, the the characters actually have personalities and backstories, and it lends you to, like, I remember the names of the characters in this movie. And, movie, and there's so many movies I re-review where it's like, you know, and even in my notes as I'm watching it, I'm like, you know, girl one gets, you know, head split open, like girl two... Because like you said, they're just there to, you know, take off their clothes and get murdered. But um, this doesn't have any of that, which Giallo had a lot of that. And um, this didn't even really have a lot of on-screen violence. It's not very gory. Um, and, I mean, that kind of rents itself to to that classic feel as well. There's not... Less is more type of like yeah, seventies like approach, said, like in Halloween more, too. It's more suspenseful. Um, honestly, like some of the language and like some of the other themes are like what's more like off putting and it's proper and creepy. offensive and creepy than the kills themselves. You genuinely feel like the guy, the man on the phone, is like a predator. Like you feel like he is a fucking threat, That's not a, just because he's a menacing guy, like the shape or something like that, but because it's like. I don't know, man. I think we've all known enough men and women and have seen enough things in real life to where when we see the like the phone call that happens in one of the first scenes of the movie and it's panning the slow shot through all the wh- young and women's face each one, yeah, and listening to the shit shot. he says, it's like, oh my God, it's really disturbing. Way yes. more disturbing than any gore or blood that really was absent from the film, actually. Yeah, no, that first that first scene with the first phone call with, with Barb on the phone, um, yeah. you know, giving him sass back because she's one of the older ones and she's been drinking. But yeah, I mean, you didn't you didn't hear language like that in not, films. Uh, especially in not the, out of women, young women, like yeah. college aged women yeah, on screen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mostly meant what he was saying on the phone, but you were also oh, no, <laughs> correct but, with that Barb is. Just like all the writing. Yeah, well. she's. Yeah um the writing in 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 general but and man it's it's this is one of those movies where it's hard to watch where it's like oh okay that's where that's why this movie exists five ten years later like Mm -hmm. the influence this movie has is so obvious um i mean for me like when a stranger calls like come on oh yeah there's a lot of connectivity there i don't know did you get any of that trivia what trivia was there actually what do you mean Okay, so like, when a stranger calls, what, like in when a stranger calls, it has references to this. No, so uh, there's interconnectivity that I gotta research before I speak too out of school. But like, Bob Hit. Clark did Black Christmas, right? He also then was seeking the rights to do a follow up film called Halloween, which was going to be another fi- film that revolved around a holiday that was capitalizing on like the horror movie craze. He ended up not doing that because he took the like screenwriting options for when a stranger calls, I think Mm. after the success of black Christmas. Oh, and then he like ended up not finishing when a stranger calls. Somebody else picked that up. And then that was the one that uh, stars. What's her name from princess bride is miracle. Max's wife, Carolyn, (laughs) Whatever. Anyway, right. Carol Kane. It's Carol Kane. Yeah. Nineteen like seventy eight. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. When a stranger calls, and then John uh, John Carpenter came in and bought the rights to the film title Halloween and made Halloween. the Michael Myers what? film Halloween. And all of this happened like within five years. And honestly, I probably told this story horribly. It's out there. It's easily researched. It's what I should have done before I started talking about <laughs> it on a podcast. But if you're interested in that, um, go ahead and check it out. But yeah, That's it definitely has. I'm gonna look into that. That's wild. It definitely has a lot of influence over both of those films. Yeah. Um, and then it also has a lot of influence just over the genre, it, totally. But I think of films like in the early proto, 
um, slasher vein, uh, like uh, Slumber Party Massacre or yeah. Tourist Trap, like I some of these of types too. of movies. Yeah, even like Maniac. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good POV, more POV stuff. Yeah, a lot of that stuff before it really gets into like the protagonist um, being the villain type of Freddy, Jason, Chucky, kind of like the last days of a slasher, but like those early years when it was a little bit more the Giallo formula. Yeah, um, I mean Sorority House Massacre. Right. That's a series. There's like three or four of them at least. All the axe to grind, the is. town that dreaded sundown. It's one of those, but it's better than all of them, I think, my personally. And I like a lot of those movies I just mentioned. Yeah. Rob, we're rambling. Jump in here, buddy. Yeah, this <clears> is <throat> Rob's first time seeing this. Uh, Michael and I are relatively familiar. Well, you've seen it the most. I've seen it a lot. I like this movie. I think I saw it for my first time three or four years ago, and I've watched it every um, holiday season since, and I... We'll continue to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first watch, pretty good. Uh, not exactly what I expected. I did expect a lot more gore, yeah. to be honest. But it is funny, and it is a good flick. And like you guys say, the the characters are memorable. Um, I couldn't say I would name all of the sorority girls, but um, the mom, uh, sorority house mom, like Mrs. Mrs. Mac. Mac, she's yeah. hilarious. She's she great. That like extra strength Sherry the whole time. She's like, got one everywhere. Trying to like yeah. hold things together, which is just like a good. She's going through like the bookshelf. She's I like, mean, like A B yeah, for it's, booze. Yeah, it's like alcoholism <laughs> is funny, but like, but kind of in like an old vaudevillian sort of way. Yeah, and, and she's like Irish. It's not a stereotype or anything. Yeah, she's, not at all. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> but she, yeah, she's like responsible for um, keeping track of all these women and their morals. And um, I don't know. Uh, I I had the uh, option to, or not the option. I had the chance to uh, do some VR with a friend or relative uh, over the holiday, and it felt very much like that that scene oh, where the he's POV. like climbing. Yeah, the <laughs> POV where he's like climbing up the lattice work and everything. I thought you were about to say you did a Black Christmas vr game and that i was about to be like what wild. where no, no, i want to do that it was like a that rock climbing, so crazy you know <laughs> that kind of traditional um but overall like i don't know it was a good watch um yeah you guys kind of said it all so <laughs> we really got it too it's wrapping up what'd you give it <laughs> <laughs> no come on it's been 10 minutes so this movie it has a pretty good cast um i think of uh, a lot of the genre actors um, get a little bit extra like bias, in my opinion, maybe. But um, whenever I see a name like John Saxon on credits, I get kind yeah. of pumped. Um, he's in it. And he's so handsome. He's Dude, John Saxon, I tell you what, it's 60s, 70s John Saxon is a fucking smoke show. He stays handsome for a long time, obviously. But like some of his 60s stuff that he was doing in Italy, like, God, the dude is... Attractive. attractive and he speaks like four languages and he's a movie star and he's uh, yeah fucking he's a badass, badass. Hot, hot. um so he plays the lieutenant in this um and he's kind of the man who eventually will be tasked with uh finding the missing sorority girl claire after she fails to meet up with her father when they have uh plans to go away for the holiday like she's gonna pick her up from the sorority home or whatever meet yeah her she's, somewhere. she's kind of painted early on as kind of like a good girl a little bit of an outcast or having a party she's the first one to go upstairs to bed she's meeting her um dad at the train station i think she's supposed to be there at one and it's like a big deal that she's even 30 minutes late you know like her dad is concerned because it's clear like she wouldn't be she wouldn't be late um yeah which is how which is like what kind of kicks off the main plot um yeah claire is played by lynn griffin who i don't know pretty uh, she's really pretty um i don't know a lot about her or her career but a quick little look on the internet suggests that she was in like six other christmas movies way later like in the 2000s like one called cabin connection it takes a christmas village santa (laughs) baby 2 and like so i don't know is she like reprised that sound amazing 
cashed yeah, in. Sounds like something yes, we would watch. Those types of movies you guys would watch. <laughs> She's cashed in maybe on that, um, or maybe she has some other acting credits I don't know about, but um, she was good in this movie. She doesn't stick around long. She's mostly remembered for being the girl in the bag in the rocking chair, which, which is, is so, so sick. good. We'll get into more of that. Go later. ahead, get into it. Because it's iconic. I mean, you're not giving anything away, right? It's in the first 10 minutes, and it's well, like on the cover. You want to talk about the first kill? Sure. Okay. Why not? We'll set up and the kill. How's it? How do we lead into it? What's going on? I guess we've talked about... So Claire's upstairs um, by herself. We kind of get an inkling that... Take us from the, the beginning. We just jumped around. Take us from the beginning. I want to hear you talk. From the very beginning? You the can do it beginning. in a few sentences, but yeah. Um, I mean, it's the... We're in the sorority house. Well, you know, I'll get to that part, and and it's we're introduced by these to these group of girls who are um, who are on the phone. The phone rings, and it's evident that this is not the first phone call of this type that they've gotten in the night. And well, it's the girl who picks it up last, and it says answered. like, "Come back." He's called again. It's the moaner. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Because so Jess like, answers the, the phone. moaner. It's the moaner. Um, they've and, given him a name. Yeah. Like this is not this is not the first time it's happened. Um, and as a um, Barb ends up getting a phone, who is just a member of the sorority. She's obviously, you know, older, like kind of, kind of like the bitchy one. Um, you know, there's got to be one. She's always got to, you know, she's always got to drink. She's kind of. She's Julian. Yeah, she's kind of mean. <laughs> she's kind of mean to Claire and and like kind of harsh. But she's on the phone and she's giving. She's like, you know, what do you want? You creep and. Um, and there's like a, I mean, a crazy voice, like you said, I do think it can be kind of unintentionally funny at some times, but for the most part, um, and especially like in 1974, like it's creepy and he vulgar. says very vulgar, vulgar things, um, that I probably shouldn't even say what I won't, but you know, very sexual yeah. and violent things kind of like in the vein of like Linda Blair while she's. You possessed, know, possessed right. by the fucking devil, um, like way more. I think of when a stranger calls, two thousand and eight. I feel like that movie's really popular. Like turn that shit up to twelve. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. But anyway, he's super nasty. Like blah blah blah. Barb doesn't seem to care. Like we we get a call like this all the time. Yeah, like the, twice a, twice a week. Um, yeah, I'm from the city. This the, guy's amateur hour. But I don't remember what Barb says. She does. She throws a couple insults and she throws one and he does a crazy thing with with his voice. He does a bunch of different voices. You're not sure what's going on. If there's more than one person involved, if he's, you know, just insane. Um, but Barb gets a jab in and then the phone call ends with just him not doing a voice is going, I'm going to kill you. Click. And Barb doesn't care. Sc- Barb doesn't care. Nor She's a little tuned e- up too. Nor even say that to any of the other girls because they would maybe have gotten more concerned more quickly if they had but you know barb's kind of like you know fuck that creep we're having a party whatever let me jump in Um, real quick barb is played by margot kidder um who is famous for being lois lane in the in the dean can not the dean can sorry in the christopher reeves like superman movies Oh. No, she's like the <laughs> Lois Lane for a lot of people. people. That's cool. I didn't. It's know. like her and Terry Hatcher. She was the one in the movie. So she's in Superman like one, two, and three, I believe. Um, and then Jess is played by Olivia Hussey, who is actually in the news now. Um, she what? is suing Paramount Pictures for a nude scene. Is that this yes. thing? Yes. From like the 60s. Yes. Oh, from Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet yeah. 1965 or 1964. Or maybe it was like 1960. I can't recall exactly. But it was Romeo and Juliet. Her and uh, Romeo and Juliet were both played by um, 15 and 16 year old uh, actors, she being one of them. And um, I also believe it was filmed in Canada. So the age of consent laws were like a little unclear. But like. This film is Canadian. This one is, yes. We're not talking yeah, about Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't um, know if we mentioned that. So because um, the age of consent laws were a little weird, they were nude, but then the, like what property was distributed like through an American you know, distribu- distribution company. And um, yeah, I mean, they're minors. On it's fucking weird. It's, I remember watching that in like freshman English class. 
Really? really? Yeah, like we watched, I watched it the in Leo, class. Leo DiCaprio one. Oh, really? Yeah. So we watched that I one. I assume I watched that one as well. And, um, you know, whatever. You're in high school. You get your permission slips. We've all see, probably seen nudity and shit in our high school films, right? Or whatever. But I don't know. 15, 16. It's weird. It is weird. But Olivia Hussey, yeah, she played Juliet, and she would also go on to have like a pretty solid uh, and noted career. She was in Jesus of Nazareth, and she played the Virgin Mary. So, I mean, we're talking wow. about someone who played Juliet in the Virgin Mary, um, and she's been in a handful of other things. But so you yeah. know she's hot. <laughs> you know she's hot. You know she's pure. <laughs> um, she's good. But, yeah, anyway. She's great in this. So I'm going to kill you. Barb doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Claire goes upstairs to pack her bags because she's going to be leaving in the morning to meet her father so they can go away for the holiday. Mm-hmm. But. You want me to go again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or Rob jumps in, but he's just snacking and but, watching. What? But what, what? 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 What do you want? But Claire is not alone. Um, and like I said, we kind of got this idea. There's like something that happens in passing someone. One of the girls walks by the front door and closes it. And this is like. Who left the hell left the front door open? And it's just like a real quick second. But as an audience that knows what this movie is, you're like, oh, he's in the home yep. now. He's in there. Um, and sure enough, Claire is is packing, and this is what? this is a this is a great scene and 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 pretty iconic as as well. He's in um, he's in the closet, and she's getting you know it's one of those cla- you've seen it a hundred times, slightly different every time maybe of. You know, someone pulling stuff out of the closet that the killer is in and still not realizing it. But us uh, as an audience we that have knows a pretty he's strong there, idea he's in there. We can like kind of see a silhouette and it like draws your eye there really well because you're like, can you see him through the plastic? Or is that and just by the time he thought your that. mind? And like by the time you figure it out, she's back in the closet and she's grabbed. So this um, is in like Halloween. This is in Friday the 13th for sure. Like those are iconic kills I would think yeah. of, right? Uh, but this one's before both of that. And it, what he does is he grabs the like um like the plastic. Cl- clear through or cl- see-through plastic slip cover for like a dry suit or bag. like a, dry, a fucking dry clothes, yeah. yeah, a dry cleaning bag. And uh, he puts it over her head and suffocates her. Yeah. Drags her up to the fucking attic. And Ooh. then yeah, we get a nice little um attic door shut. Which is like kind of a softer version of the hatch door. Leather face slamming the door at the same year. Um, yeah. And then, and then this is what I mean. This is how people know this movie from the cover and these shots of um, he puts her in a in a rocking chair chair in the attic in a window Sets with her up, the plastic yeah. over her face and her. Well, and it's a big sorority house, so it's like fourth story up. Like you probably really can't see it. And there's a good shot where like oh. you're like, why can't anybody see it? And because there's even the cops are outside at one point. And um it just pans back from her rocking in the window and it's a dusty so window. Good. It's an old house. There's trees in the way and Those it's off shots. of the ground and, and nobody's like, le- any reason to look up there. And it's she's just dark and there's lots of lights and trees and stuff for decoration. Because it's too, winter which would kind of you know? obstruct it. And then um, she like stays up there for a while. Yeah, a few the days. Whole movie. <laughs> the whole movies. Yeah, which is only what what three days. Three. Yeah, so she's two, not three days. really stinking yet, and also it's everybody's hard, yeah. leaving. It's cold. Yes, and it's cold, and she's far away. She's all the way up in the top. Yeah, it's kind of like um, an end of semester, end of the year, whatever party where, as in, the people are leaving the house is supposed to pretty much be empty. empty. And that's why um, the mother, they call her Mother Mac or Miss Mac, Mac yeah. comes by. She's like the house mother, the sorority house owner or something like that. We don't know exactly what she's her role mother. is, but she's like yeah. the house mother. We don't we don't know for a while. And um, yeah, so she's kind of watching over everything as everybody's leaving. And she knows who's supposed to be coming and who's supposed to be going. And the girls are leaving one by one. And she ends up being the one at the house when Clara's father eventually makes it to the sorority house um you know we don't have to go over detail but he gets there looking for her because she wasn't where she was supposed to be to meet yeah and um there's a lot of comedy here with mrs mac there's a lot of comedy comedy all the time well the slapstick too even like with the the lipstick cracking you up dude that was how she did she she did like half a lip yeah claude claude claudie cat um and the cop the cops are funny 
Um, we don't have to get too much into it, the, but when Barb like worth a counter, when Barb tells the rookie that the address is like eight fellatio way or something, and he's like, "And how do you spell that?" And they figure that out. They are cracking it's up at awesome. him. Yeah, that is good. And um, a whole time, th- like this is happening, we have Jess involved in like um a pregnancy with her boyfriend and she's talking about getting an abortion and he's talking about getting married and she's saying like she doesn't want to do that because she still has her dreams and she wants to finish a university and so like there's some heavy things going on there claire's fa- father's looking for her mrs mac at some point along the way is going to be one of the next victims and then the phone rings again and there's less and less people around, but Jess is sticking around because she doesn't have anywhere to go. So Jess ends up being the person who answers the phone again. And if you notice, the phone rings every time a kill happens. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's a tip oh, off there. Um, yeah. And so it's an, it's the same voice. It's another lewd call, another nasty, derogatory phone call. And um, at this point, there's a missing girl. Dad has put in a police report. There's P- Peter's been a prick. Oh, Peter, her boyfriend has been a prick. But yeah. I'm so saying, she's like on, she's on edge. She's on she's edge. Probably not feeling, and she's being safest. harassed. And now, like people are missing. And so eventually, the cops, who John Saxon's lieutenant, ends up, you know, getting the idea like, hey, maybe there's something to look into here. Um, and more and more things happen, and it leads up to a wiretapping, right? Yes. Like, can we jump up to that point? Yes. Wiretapping. Um, and I love this. Too. Well, go ahead. Well, I just love the. I don't know how it works or what it is, but the um, the guy watching the really old like computer room that does the tracing of it with all the clicking machines going <laughs> yeah, on, and like a real to real down the rows, like that is. I like that it's kind great. of shit, and it's you like, love I, proto computer. It's just <laughs> cool. I mean, that's. The, I mean, give me that instead of like some fake computer interface that didn't exist at the time. Which uh, one more man? You know what I mean. Um, but Evil I thought speak? that, but I thought that was really cool. I don't know a lot about wire tappings, but I thought it was cool. It like showed them go to the house and like actually, you know, take apart the phone and like do it. Tap like the wire. It's not something that's just like bullshit done. We got cameras everywhere and stuff. I like that so aspect you, of it. Even though yeah. this movie is, it like seemed real, gritty, yeah. and it can make you uncomfortable, and it's fucking dark. We'll get to it, but it doesn't really have a happy ending. Um, this no. movie is at times watching a lot more like a mystery, like we said. And I watched yeah. it with some people who aren't necessarily horror movie fans, but it, you know, it's a Christmas movie. I'm a horror movie fan. I I've watched it with other people. Oh, okay. But uh, if I if I were to say like it's a good holiday movie, like. Mm. It doesn't necessarily have a lot of holiday themes. It's easy to forget that it's a Christmas movie and it's easy to forget that it's like a horror movie because a lot of times it's just kind of like a suspense and a drama and a mystery. That takes place on, during a holiday. Yeah. And like sometimes on the holiday, it's less of a character than it could have been. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but there are some good scenes of like the vulgar phone calls happening and then in the outside the house you can hear the like carolers. carolers. It's so good. Well, there's, a kill, there's a kill happening during yeah. the actual... Um, Caroling. Carolers, but we'll we'll go. There is a pretty big gap um, in between first and second kill. Yeah. Um, and the second kill is Miss Mac, Mac, the house mother. Um, and it's really just wrong place, wrong time. It's just she's the one that ends up in the attic first, and it kind of seems like whoever goes up there is going to be next. And it's because she's looking for Claire's cat because she's drunk and she Claude. wants to say goodbye to it. So she's looking for Claude and she hears a noise in the attic and ends up going there. And we yeah. get up and we get a fun. He's up there like holding this like, I don't even know, like an industrial hook. I, like what are those called? <laughs> Is it like a fireplace instrument? Or? No. No. no but it's he like he has a, and he drops and let goes. But It's, it's like, like a pulley a, with a hook. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's and, and some, I don't know why it's in the attic. attic. Yeah. Um, you know, but it swings. It's a cool it, kill. It swings in there and, it, and it. it gets her. And, and yeah, and the gore you get to is see off her get screen. Sucked up through the because so this is the she way the attic up. is. It's yeah. like one of those attics with like a false ceiling that you push that up you push and up slide and back. Yeah. And then you can pull the like uh, ladder down and hop up in there. Yeah. I'm pantomiming. Big I'm just glad we did that. You hit the lamp. But um. 
and so she eventually pushes up the the false bottom and then walks up there and we can see him we don't ever actually see him but we see him holding just the the hook which is perfectly lit and he throws it and then we get the outside shot of her feet and her Can ankles just up. get lifted straight up and then the Sweet. lid shuts again it's kind of it's so good that you said it's like the leather face it's so yeah, slamming it the door yeah it is similar and the hooks too yeah exactly um and again no gore on screen but it seems so fucking brutal right yeah. It's hopeless and dark, and there's yeah. not a lot of like music in the house. Like when they're in the house, there's not a lot of music, which makes it like daunting. I feel. Yeah, and I don't know if it was. I mean, it was definitely on purpose. In the movie, I'm not trying to get inside of a fictional killer's brain, but I love how he's there waiting and can kill her at any moment. But he Wait, so lets she's... her have this. 30, 40 seconds of true fear where she's looking around in this dark attic and can't see anything and, and even she waits sees, for her But she sees see Claire, Claire first, yeah. Yeah, and, she and as soon as realizes she sees Claire is when he... She need, well, no, she starts to turn around. So, like, she tenses up, she sees Claire, and she's like, she has this oh, fuck moment, like... I need to go. I don't need to be here. Maybe I'm not alone. And kind of turns around slowly. And it's almost like as soon as that she gets that 180 point, she, boom. Boom. Yeah, he waits for it. Which, which is like. good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Another phone call. More lewd shit. Peter's being a cunt. And so we yeah, start to think. Yeah, Peter. Because he's like starting to demand like – He's starting to demand that she's going to drop out and he's going to quit the academy and move in and have a house. They're going to buy a house. And she's like, I don't want to marry you. And he's like, no, we're going to start a family. It's okay. And blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I I do not want to do this, Peter. I love you. I'm sorry, but we're not doing it. And then he's in the house and doesn't like mention being in the house. And this is right after she gets off the phone at the second phone call. This is with the kill. The second phone call. And um, then... He comes down the stairs, and we kind of think that it's like a POV thing where the killer is going to maybe get Jess, Mm -hmm. but it's Peter, and he's like, oh, I was asleep upstairs. I got tired waiting for you. I hope you don't mind. She's like, why did you sneak up on me? Why didn't you tell me that was you? Like, What are you doing? Why are you being weird? And we kind of think it's Peter, right? Is that what we're supposed to think? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, as a... Yeah, as as a first-time watch, I I think so. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, I mean, and and I mean, he obviously ends up being our our red herring, but then this puts a question in everyone's mind: like, oh, is like, is it Peter? Is he capable of doing this? We're not sure because um, he's not developed a a whole lot. We know he's like a um, um, a boyfriend, apparently a really good like concert pianist. Like, he is. We see him like in a huge hall playing piano for three, three old men, old and, like men in professors or whatever. Yeah, we can only assume that. You know, he's kind of like hot shit at what he does, but that's it. That's really all we know about him. So we don't know what he's capable of, which makes him a good red herring. Because could he kill because he's so upset? Well, I see, we know that he's passionate because he's chosen to offer to walk away from all of that to have this life with her. And yeah. she says no again. And so like, we know he's passionate and at the very least that poses a threat, right? Because he's by proximity, one of the only potential um, perpetrators. Yeah. Cause I guess I just even thought at this point, Jess isn't a hundred percent certain that anyone has been killed yet. No. So in her mind, she's like, Oh, Peter is here. Like he's probably the one that's been calling me. And for her so far that's the biggest threat are the phone calls because she doesn't know um about the murders that actually occurred which makes it even more so in her she mind thinks it's weird that nobody knows where claire is and claire's dad's coming around and yeah. they are doing the wiretaps to see if there's something correlate but like there's it, definitely a there's possibility no, like, that murder? danger happened and there's like right. a murder of a little girl in a park nearby that's happening like right now though like right into. as this yeah. is happening I think this is kind of when everybody starts to go, oh, shit. Because now we're also like, where's Miss Mac? Yeah. So now we're kind of... But, the, you know, the whole, whole adage is like, no body, no murder. Right. So, like, nobody's been found yet. We don't know what's going on. But it's getting fucky. And uh, Olivia Hussey plays Jess is getting r- really uneasy, even in her own home. And really, it doesn't... Home. It really Helm. doesn't 
the cops don't intervene until it's Phil's boyfriend. Phil's boyfriend. Like Barb's Barb's boy- boyfriend. Barb's Phil, boyfriend. Who shows up is like she's not no, with Phil, Phil, Phil is Phyllis. one of the girls. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, but I think it is Barb's boyfriend who shows up at the police station and is pissed and is like, "Why isn't anyone doing anything about this?" Like blah blah blah. And he's like yelling at like the rookie cop that's like an idiot and it's like funny yeah like the deputy and the lieutenant I, if i remember correctly the lieutenant like overhears him yelling and is like go get me that file and looks at it and is like you're like you fucking idiot like you know there's a girl just got murdered someone's missing you're not looking into this so that's when yeah. they go to the house and they tap the phones and yeah. then we get the classic this is going to be hard but when he calls again, you got to keep him on the line for as long as possible because it's the old mm-hmm. way of doing it. Like it's going to take like a minute to trace where this call is coming from. Yeah. And, um, you know, without fail, he's going to call again and they do manage to keep him on the phone for a while, but not quite long enough the first time. First two times. First two times. First yeah. two times he calls and. And yeah, you keep on thinking he's going to get them and we get these shots that I love of the guy running down the aisles of all the things clicking and then it ends and he's like, and they've got to call and be like, I'm sorry. And like, we didn't get them. Like, you've got to keep them there longer. Uh, But I think it's the second time that he says something that Peter said to her when he was there. So she starts freaking out. And yeah, it's like the same the, type of verbiage. And the lieutenant catches on to her reaction to it. And it's like, I think there's something you're not telling me. And eventually she's like, he said like the exact thing that Peter said to me mm-hmm. at the house, like hours before or whatever, which is when she really thinks. And like, we kind of think like, oh shit, like it is Peter. Like, how is it not Peter? He said words that, like how would anyone else know like blah 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 but then she comes to this realization that one of the calls came in when peter was at the house so it can't so be she, peter so it can't be peter and, and we're, also so we're if on. the educated <laughs> you know viewer can yeah. put together that he heard what was said to jess and Cause he he's, said because he's in the house yeah we know he's in the house we know he's in the house <laughs> because we watched him climb up and the door was open and he's in the right. attic and he's been hanging out so we're kind of putting this together and you know this is where we say like oh the carol kane uh when a stranger calls because eventually not soon or not too far from here and if you guys haven't seen this movie um we were giving a lot of, way a lot of spoilers it's like 50 years old we'll check it out to say, 50 years old if you haven't fucking seen it yeah but we'll watch it and we'll you know well, there's a lot we haven't said that's worth watching but eventually right. it's the classic oh we got we got the call trace we know where he's coming from oh where's it coming from bob 1234 main street yeah, it ain't coming from 1234 main street that's, that's where it's going. going and he goes it's oh, so it's coming from the there too and he's, oh fuck it's coming from inside the house yeah so yeah you know but can we get there or will it be too late you know well it's up to that that rookie cop he you know puts him in charge and he's like if you fuck this up i'll kill you he's like you gotta call her and just you know try to keep her on the phone and make sure she's safe or whatever but don't tell her yeah that the killer's in the house because she's supposed to call and say jess like don't ask any questions Just walk out the front door. But we know Jess pretty well at this point. And we know the deputy. She's worried about her friends. She's resilient. She's smart. She's strong. She's sexy. She's badass. So she doesn't leave. She goes to the front door. She screams the names of Barb and Claire and Miss Mac, which we didn't even talk about Barb's death, but whatever. Um, And she decides to go up there which is the complete opposite of what she was supposed to do Mm. come on come on barb um and we get and we get like in we get like an interaction between killer and final girl and girl um we don't we don't really see we still don't we still don't see him um which is great it's kind of like that creature feature thing where it's like you know, you don't. Yeah, you can't put that. <laughs> the less, the less you see of it, the scarier it is. Like kind of thing, and um, and she ends up hiding in the basement, and there's someone at the window, 
being like, Jess, Jess, like, are you okay? And we realize it's Peter. So then again, we're like, well, we know it's not Peter, but this is not, he's not making himself look good to Jess or the cops or anyone else. Like, why the fuck is he there? Why does he know she's in the basement? Blah, blah, blah. Um, Ends up kicking the little window to go down and is like, why are you scared? Like, what's wrong? Like, blah, blah, blah. And then we get like back to the cops and like we find we find out um well they find out that she didn't actually leave the house, so you know, they've all gotta get over there and, and see what's going on and, and they go over there and they find Peter on top of Jess and at first they both look dead. Right. Um but then we see it's just Peter who's dead and she's been killed by um Jess with a fire poker um and there's some blood on him and it's it's not great honestly it's kind of chalky and like bright red it's jello <laughs> yeah um and then honestly we get one of my favorite endings to a horror movie that I've seen in a yeah. while and maybe like it's such a great I mean Shot. first of all like red herring it's a great shot they think they've got their man and there's this slow pan that we talked about a little bit earlier of the camera that starts on claire's face in the rocking chair upstairs still in the plastic with eyes open mouth open like it's creepy and she's rocking and she's moving she's rocking in the chair and the camera just zooms out and out and you can see her the whole way, and it's so hard not to keep looking at her because there's the because there's the what you said like because you want to keep no trying to see her. Seeing her, like I can see her. You can, but you can also see how like you can't. See why her. would you ever look up there or think that that's a dead body? And, right. But we see there's so much going on outside. There's hustle bustle of cops and ambulances and dads and and sorority girls and there's like stuff going on and then we hear the phone ring again which is because somebody's died because somebody just got cause, murdered because someone just got murdered yeah and, and it's like fucking i don't know what it is i almost started doing like i don't know christmas carols but like the green song no 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 but it's some sort of like uh like hark the herald angels sing or something like there's carolers out I think there it is hark the herald angels sing and they're just it. singing and the credits start to roll and you're all the way zoomed out and you're on the street and you're looking at it and like there's a twinkle of the Christmas lights and it's just like, oh, fuck. It's like it's not over. And then the... Yep, and then the phone rings. And it goes for so long. There's like no answer machines. It's 1974. The fucking phone rings, rings for like two minutes. Up. Black screen. Credits are still done. And it's the like... The music stops. So and good. it's just the phone ringing through the credits. It's a great, great, such a credit. good ending. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's good. Would you rate it? I gave it a three out of a hundred. Yeah. Wow. Oh, did you watch the <laughs> the unrich stored version? The un <laughs> unrich stored. Unrich stored version. Yeah. Um. No, I like this movie a lot. I'll go first. I give this. Uh. This is my. This is 1A favorite horror movie around the holidays. This and Jack Frost are both really good. They're way different. This is a much better film. Yeah. Jack Frost makes me laugh out loud really, really hard. But this is like <laughs> fuck a good movie, man. We'll give it an 88. Um, I'm a big fan of this movie. Like I said, um, once I discovered it, I've watched it every holiday since, and I will continue to do so um i love the influence that this movie has had it's hard not to love these first couple american north american slashers that kind of helped develop you know my favorite genre of movies so it's hard to dislike a movie like this you know came out same year as texas chainsaw all that gotta love it gotta love we didn't touch on this we don't need to um Gotta love the parallels of how scary this must have been coming out that they had to postpone a release because Ted Bundy 
literally pretty much did the same fucking thing for real in yeah. Florida. Went into a sorority house and beat a couple of girls to death with like a piece of a tree. Yeah, so um, I think this actually didn't come out in the theatrically US. until like. 75 or 76 but it was filmed and released like in the festivals and right before it was supposed to premiere um like na nationally um the ted bundy uh crimes had occurred so yeah i yeah. mean that's got to add just another layer of real fear um for young women and anybody and and yeah and anybody but um yeah great movie we've talked about it and i gave it an 88 as well actually so uh, good first watch, but honestly, like I'll jello, like give me more gore on screen. I don't want to just see like kills off screen and blood or whatever. But <clears throat> the rocking chair and like the plastic bag kill was pretty cool. Yeah, um, a lot of good comedy in it, like more than I was expecting by a large margin. So I don't know. I can't really say much more than you guys have. Um, this is seventy eight. It's not bad. Would you continue? Would you consider like watching it every holiday season? Would you? Is could no. you watch this once a year? No. No, I don't think so. Like it's, it, there's no nostalgia for it, and that's a big part of holiday movie watching for me. And that's fair. Beyond that, it needs to be pretty specific. There's no princes. There's no ghosts. It's not even that. It's just like like you guys say. I mean, like there's a kinda, big part of that. You kind of forget that it takes place during Christmas. You know, yeah, and 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 not that other like Die Hard is not like super heavy on the holidays, but that has some nostalgia to it. So I I I will watch Gremlins, but this one, after the second phone call, like it's it's lewd and it's like and it's like di disturbing, but it kind of loses its effect. Yeah, um, and I'm just not really a fan of Jalo in the in the genre, so it. It's not really for me, but like again, like Mrs. Mack is a fucking all star. She's great. I love her. Um, yeah, she was great, and uh, and a decent flick. So yeah, uh, good good to check out. I don't know about watching it every year. Fair enough. It's a good one. You heard it there. What are we doing next week? Elmies. Well, we got to wrap up the uh, year in season three with the. Third annual, nope, second, second annual, annual Elmies. So we'll, we will be giving the people what they want. And uh, we will not promise we can't bitch slap each other. You know, we may or may not. Will Smith. <laughs> Wait, what? It's, it's Will Smith thing. Oh, oh. you can um, slap me. Hell yeah, that's hot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, do the same categories we did last year, maybe one or two more, and uh, you can vote along with us. It means nothing anyway, and we've already picked the winners. We haven't talked about it yet, but <laughs> we will. We will. Uh, dollar per text message per use. Per yeah. use. Yeah, unless well, you're what, a to vote. Unless you're a platinum subscriber. Yeah, to vote. Platinum subscription is on sale right now. It's fifty percent off, so it's only two hundred dollars for the season. Yeah. So go ahead a steal, folks. Have off. Yeah, steal. folks, come on. And if you are a platinum subscriber, then your text messages will only be eighty-five cents. Uh, is a steal. So please sign up uh, for that. I mean, you're gonna vote for <laughs> every category, so math. you're gonna. It it's works. a lot of votes. You save it. It adds you're up. It adds up. Money. You're practically making money. Well, if you're a real fan, you're gonna be texting all the time. All the time. Because yeah. you have our number. Homemade Simpson stuff. Oh. But yeah, we're going to do the Elmies and then we're going to start season four. Season, season four, four. Morg door. Morg the last door. season, the final. We're going to close ring. the Morg door. Beyond the, the Morg, Morg door. Morg door is closing season four. Season four, Morg door. We started the Chrome door. We're ending at the Morg <laughs> door. <laughs> They're both really hot. Elvis got toe tags and tattoos. We might even kiss on camera once. Ooh. 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 Three way. But yeah, tune in next week for the Elmies. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to argue until we reach a conclusion. I'm going to be right. They're going to argue. And it'll be fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Guys, As always. Thank you. Thank, thank you.
watch two films. Come on, watch two films. If you scared, don't come over here. 13 and M. 13 and M. 13 and M.